Hey guys, welcome to Boxing Squared for boxing news and views from around the internet. Two heavyweight fights have been added to the Anthony Joshua Dillian White rematch card in August. Philip Hergovic will be facing Dempsey McKean. Remember, Hergovic is the IBF mandatory. And then you also have Johnny Fisher added to the card facing Harry Armstrong. So we'll go through the press release and then who Hergovic and McKean have been fighting because it's been a little bit lean and McKean's been fed absolutely no one of note since joining Matchroom. So this is a huge step up for him. So first, the press release, as you can see here, the uh, graphic Hergovic and McKean Undefeated heavyweights, Hergovic and McKean collide on sold out Joshua vs. White 2 card. Uh, IBF number one Al Animal returns against the Tower of Terror. Or, oh, I've missed out the Terror, but. So, we'll just go straight down to the comments here. Philip Hergovic saying, The heavyweight champions cannot avoid me any longer, and once I have defeated Dempsey McKean on August 12, they will have no other option but to face me. I have waited patiently and bided my time, but the game is up. El Animal is coming for you, and it's ready to take the belts back to Croatia. I think, unfortunately for um, Filip Hergovic, that you've got a small cabal of heavyweights at the top. Wilder, Fury, Usyk, and Joshua. And they are the ones controlling the division along with their promoters. Your promoter, Filip Hergovic, is uh, part of the problem. Uh, that's, you know, he's keeping you inactive and this is your first fight in a year. So you've got a, um, a further quote saying, a McKean will be a tough, strong opponent, but it has never faced anyone as powerful and skillful as me. August 12 at the O2 in London is the night the heavyweight divi division starts to change. McKean says, this is what it's all about, the big fights. I've been grinding a big portion of my life for a fight like this. I'm one win away from fighting Usyk for the four world titles. This is my world title fight. So he must be counting the IBO erroneously. Usyk holds three of the four major sanctioning body titles. The IBO is on the outside looking in. Eddie Hearn saying, we have a monstrous night of heavyweight boxing in store for fight fans around the world on Saturday, August 12, live from the sold out O2 in London. Old foes Anthony Joshua and Dillian White meet again in a must win clash at the top of the bill. And I'm excited to confirm the first two undercard editions of what will be a stacked card. The IBF's number one ranked Philip Hergovic returns a year on from his final elimination win over Zhang Jilei. Uh, in Saudi Arabia, El Animal fights in the UK for the first time as a professional against Australia's unbeaten Dempsey McKean, who secures the biggest fight of his career. Bit of a weird kind of quote, just kind of restating everything. And then he says, Johnny Fisher, uh, the Romford Bull, begins his assault on the domestic heavyweight scene when he takes on Harry Armstrong for the vacant Southern Area title. And there's much more to be announced soon. Catch all of the action, yada, yada, yada. Khaled Sauerland, who also co-promotes Philip Hergovic, says August 12 is going to be a massive heavyweight night and Philip will have to overcome a very tough and top-ranked Australian to fulfil his dream of fighting for the World Championship later this year. Later this year? Really? I mean, come on, man. That's very optimistic. One thing is clear. Only Dempsey McKean stands between Hergovic and fighting for the world title because the winner of Usyk Dubois is mandated to fight the winner we'll see what happens eh? so that is the press release um, Hergovic versus McKean I don't mind the fight but let's face it Philip Hergovic is a massive favorite in this one in Dempsey McKean he's got an opponent who's effectively the same height as him 6'6 but McKean Southpaw McKean is I would say a top 30-ish guy Hergovic a little bit um, higher up the pecking order where he really sits is slightly unclear depending on different ratings and rankings he could be in or around the top 10 or just outside but I think one thing that we haven't seen from Hergovic is just not enough activity and you have to blame his co-promoters Matchroom and also Wasserman Look here, the record 15 and 0. The guy has been pro since um, 2017. It's just not good enough. As soon as he signed with Matchroom, the fights almost dried up. It almost seems like they're grudgingly giving him fights at times. In Dempsey McKean, 22 and 0 at this point. So Hergovic was last out almost a year ago by the time that he'll be in the ring. 
so this will be his one fight potentially in 2023 maybe there will be a second at the end of the year who knows i mean yeah but um before zhang jilei which was a hotly contested fight a lot of people thought that zhang won uh, obviously Her uh, philip hergovic tasted uh, the canvas in that one too but there's just been a large array of opponents that have been largely meaningless and not good for hergovic's development Amir Amatovich, Marko Radoncic, Rydell Booker, Andre Kartos. Yeah, I mean, come on. It's not exactly a murderous row. It's not exactly the sort of fodder that should be setting him up for a world title shot at some point. At least he got the Zhang fight, and we've seen Zhang's uh, quality since uh, against Joe Joyce. So Hergovic, and I think his stock from that fight, from Zhang beating Joyce, actually went up because a lot of people are saying that Hergovic, um, they don't like him, they don't think he's uh, going anywhere, and actually Boxrec has him at number 15. Maybe that's fair based on who he's been fighting. But um, yeah, some people think that he's basic and uh, basically is going to get stopped at the top level. I think that, that win against Zhang has given people some pause for thought. In Dempsey McKean, he's got a guy who, like him, has struggled to get decent opponents for the the most part since joining matchroom uh, so he joined on he got fed don hainsworth ariel esteban bracamonte and patrick court it's just terrible so basically the last two years or the best part of it has been against um guys that are well below his station and as a result mckean whose ranking was higher on box rec has dropped down to um, number 54 in the world so he is in a couple of different sanctioning bodies philip hergovic obviously in the ibf as their mandatory challenger at this point and waiting and watching and wanting a title shot at some point he's ambitious he wants to get those top fights but hergovic will he get them and this is the thing it's uh, you know half the heavyweight division has been frozen out because you've got four or five guys at the top basically you know controlling things and denying fights and fighting sparingly so guys further down don't get opportunities it's it's criminal almost but philip hergovich i think will stop dempsey mckean the preparation for mckean hasn't been great in terms of the fights that he's had in the lead up to this one and i think hergovich is big strong and if he lands the right hand I think he is going to shake Dempsey McKean up and ultimately stop him. I think Hergovic will look to walk through McKean, but he's going to have to be careful to some extent because McKean has a good left hand. I mean, we've seen McKean hurt before, like in that fight, uh, fight against Johnny Rice, but ultimately he was able to, uh, to gather himself and stop Rice later on in that fight. And Johnny Rice is no joke. So Dempsey McKean does have some quality about him, but I do think he is a bit of a step below where Philip Hergovic is. And McKean hasn't had ideal preparations in terms of those seasoning fights heading into this one. Matchroom have just given him nothing, and it's it's not going to help him on the night. Hergovic, though, you know, you can kind of say the same thing. Signed on with Matchroom has got fed, you know, for the most part, you know, irrelevant opponents up until Zhang Jilei. And I think that fight highlighted that Hergovic needed better defense and he couldn't just rely on his right hand he's got to rely on his length from the amateurs he was a decent boxer you know had decent sort of silky skills but it's almost like he's sort of shed that completely anyway moving on briefly to talk about the uh, the other fight on the card so you've got um, johnny fisher versus harry armstrong for the southern area title I actually think this is a perfectly appropriate fight for the stage of fisher's career what is he about nine and oh they said they were looking to um, step him up after his last fight to try <clears throat> contest the Southern Area title if they could. Harry Armstrong is an appropriate uh, fight at, and test at this point. He's got enough about him where he's going to be ambitious. He's not going to fall down. But Fisher should be able to win this one and pick up his uh, first piece of hardware in the pros. And also interesting comment here I wanted to, to note. So Fisher says... I was 16 years old studying for my A-levels when I watched AJ vs. White. Now I'm fighting on the undercard of AJ vs. White 2 for a title. Let's have it. Bosh. So yeah, I mean, it feels like a long time ago. I mean, it was before it pre that fight predates uh, the start of my channel by a year and a half or so. So it's one of those things that, 
yeah, it has been a long time between drinks since that fight, and a lot's happened in the heavyweight division since. Anyway, what do you make of this fight? Fisher should win, and uh, also Dempsey McKean versus um, Filip Hergovic. I'm picking Herv- Hergovic. How about you? Drop a comment loud and often. Hit like, hit subscribe, follow me on Twitter, boxing underscore squared. I'm out.